Welcome to part three of Force 13's Hurricane Week 2012, where we cover the top 100 storms this year. Today we're covering storms number 60 to 41. Storm 60 is an Atlantic hurricane that caused, at the time, unprecedented damage. This storm tracked through the Lesser Antilles as a Category 4 storm before weakening, only to strengthen and hit the South Carolina coast. This was none other than Hurricane Hugo of 1989. Hugo formed between Africa and the Cape Verde Islands before passing to the south. Hugo developed into a hurricane in the central Atlantic as it began to approach the Leeward Islands, briefly attaining Category 5 status. The storm then cruised through the Leeward Islands and struck the eastern edge of Puerto Rico as a major hurricane. Hugo weakened to a Category 2 storm over the open Atlantic, but re-intensified as it passed over the warmer waters of the Gulf Stream. Hugo made landfall in South Carolina with winds of 140 miles per hour, causing $10 billion in damage and at least 107 who were perished in the storm. Fifty nine is the weakest storm in the top one hundred in terms of wind speed, but caused over a thousand fatalities as it came ashore the Philippines in mid December of two thousand and eleven. This storm in some areas caused flooding scarcely seen before. This was Tropical Storm Washi. Washi began as a tropical depression in the low latitudes of the Pacific Ocean and moved west-northwest for most of its life. Washi became a tropical storm as it passed Palau and crossed over the island of Mindanao and then Palawan before turning west-southwest and dissipating. The rains caused by Washi were amongst the worst ever witnessed in Mindanao, killing hundreds as waters rose a number of feet in an hour in some places. The storm killed over a thousand in total. Fifty eight is the strongest storm to form in the southwest Indian Ocean and was in turn the strongest storm to ever strike Madagascar in March of two thousand and four. This was Cyclone Gafilo. Gafilo began as a tropical depression in the central Indian Ocean, first tucking southwards and then moving west northwest. The storm attained hurricane strength winds and then moved towards northern Madagascar, reaching Category 5 intensity on its approach. Gafilo struck near the town of Antalaha with wind gusts of 185 miles per hour, developing well more than half of buildings there. Flooding also occurred over many parts of Madagascar as the storm made a second landfall in the south of the country. 172 people were killed in Madagascar with a further 111 dead as a result of a capsized ferry.
57 is a storm rumoured to have the highest storm surge of over 40 feet, but this is disputed and we will never know for certain. With a death toll of at least 400, this storm was Cyclone Mahina of 1899. Mahina probably formed somewhere over the Coral Sea, and by the time they approached Australia, it was already a Category 5 storm. The storm maintained the intensity until landfall, causing a formidable storm surge of a disputed 48 feet. The cyclone pushed through the Cape York Peninsula and performed a U-turn over the Gulf of Carpentaria and eventually dissipating. At least 400 were killed as a result of the storm. Storm 56 was a typhoon that attained Category 4 intensity twice as it swept through the Philippines before making landfall in China. The deadliest typhoon of the 1984 season, this was Typhoon Ike. Ike formed to the south of Guam and slowly moved north then northwest, becoming a tropical storm in the process. After passing Guam and turning southwest, Ike briefly became a typhoon and reached typhoon strength a second time whilst passing Palau. The storm then intensified to strike northern Mindanao as a Category 4 storm and then moved over Bohol, Kebu, Negros, Panay and other islands. After weakening to a tropical storm, Ike re-strengthened into a Category 4 storm and struck China as a minimal typhoon. Ike caused heavy rainfall washing away entire towns. Thousands of buildings were also destroyed in China with a total death toll of nearly 1,500. Type 55 is one of the most formidable storms ever observed and is unusual in the amount of time it managed to maintain Category 5 intensity, a full five days, reaching a disputed sustained wind of 215 miles per hour. This is 1961's Typhoon Nancy. Nancy formed well out to sea and began intensifying immediately. Nancy quickly became a Category 5 storm before moving past Guam, then cruising northwestward before curving northward and passing the Ryukyu Islands as a Category 4 storm. After turning northwest, Nancy struck the southern Japanese coastline as a typhoon, maintaining typhoon status all the way up to its fourth landfall on Hokkaido, where it weakened to a tropical storm. Nancy killed over 170 and injured thousands in Japan, where over 300,000 homes were impacted. Flooding and landslides were the main causes of the damages in Japan. Storm 54 is another West Pacific storm, this one causing chaos in the northern Philippines when it stalled over land or just offshore for a number of days. Forming in late September 2009, this was Typhoon Palmer. Palmer formed south of Guam and moved towards Palau. The storm became a typhoon, then moved northwest and peaked at, at Category 4 intensity. Palmer began to weaken, but still made landfall in northern Luzon as a Category 2 typhoon. Maintaining typhoon status as it reached the other side, Palmer slowed down and weakened to a tropical storm before executing a U-turn back into Luzon. Palmer then moved slowly east, briefly emerged over the coast before moving back over Luzon as a tropical depression. The storm eventually moved away from the Philippines and slowly moved over Hainan and eventually made landfall in Vietnam. Palmer caused major flooding and crippling power and communication failures. Flooding also hit Taiwan and the total death toll from the storm was at least 500. At 53, it's a typhoon that caused over a thousand fatalities and over a billion dollars worth of damage in China. Reaching winds of 150 miles per hour, this was Typhoon Fred of 1994.
Fred formed in the open Pacific and passed the northern Mariana Islands whilst moving west. Fred intensified into a typhoon, moved northwest, and became a major typhoon. Fred moved north, passed the Yayama Islands as a Category 4 storm, and then curved northwest before striking China as a typhoon. Fred then weakened and dissipated. Fred caused major damage to structures in the landfall area and killed over a thousand people in total. Storm 52 was a major hurricane that affected Cuba and Florida in 1846. In a matter of hours, the storm destroyed most of the buildings in Havana and killed over 150 people, although some reports claimed there were more. A likely Category 5 storm, this was the Great Havana Hurricane of 1846. The Havana hurricane probably formed in the Caribbean Sea, striking Cuba as a Category 4 storm and perhaps intensifying to Category 5 strength as it passed over the Florida Keys. The storm flattened coastal villages and caused major destruction in Havana itself. Severe damage was also reported in Key West, with numerous fatalities. For Storm 51, we're back in the Western Pacific. The storm still stands as one of the costliest in the basin, causing $10 billion of damage. $17 billion accounted for inflation. Striking Japan as a powerful Category 2 storm, this was Typhoon Mirai. Mirai first formed well out to sea and had already reached typhoon status as it passed the northern Mariana Islands. After this, the storm quickly became a Category 4 storm and slowly moved northeast, maintaining its strength. The storm eventually reached the Ayama Islands, curved northeast, and hit mainland Japan as a Category 2 storm, with a second landfall on the southern tip of Hokkaido as a Category 1 typhoon. Mirai caused substantial agricultural and property damage in Japan. At 50 was a hurricane that killed thousands of people in North Carolina and Newfoundland. There is some uncertainty on whether it was actually the same storm that hit both locations, since the dates are a little far from each other compared to what you would expect. Nonetheless, here is the Newfoundland hurricane of 1775. The origins of this storm are unknown, but the hurricane first hit the outer banks of North Carolina causing major damage in that region. The storm then moved away from the coast and either this storm or perhaps a different storm then struck Newfoundland causing a perhaps unprecedented storm surge, drowning 4,000 people.
Storm 49 was a Category 4 Pacific hurricane that hit Mexico at its peak intensity in 1997. The storm caused hundreds of fatalities and hundreds of thousands homeless. This was Hurricane Pauline. Pauline formed to the south of Mexico, developing into a tropical storm before moving northwards, where it quickly intensified into a Category 4 hurricane. After a little weakening, Pauline regained Category 4 intensity just before landfall in Mexico, where it then paralleled the coast a short distance inland and eventually dissipated. Coastal erosion resulted, along with major environmental damage along the coast. Flooding and strong winds downed trees and structures, causing hundreds of fatalities and hundreds of thousands left homeless in the region. At 48 was an early season storm that caused heavy damage in the Gulf Coast in 1957. Forming in June of that year, this Category 4 storm made landfall at peak intensity, with Louisiana suffering the worst of the storm. This was Hurricane Audrey. Audrey formed in the southern Gulf of Mexico and quickly developed into a hurricane as it began to move north. The storm then began to intensify as it approached the Texas coastline. Audrey reached its peak intensity shortly before landfall as a Category 4 storm and struck the Texas-Louisiana border. Damage from Audrey was catastrophic near the landfall area, where wind speeds over 100 miles per hour were recorded. At least 500 were killed. Storm 47 was an Atlantic hurricane that reached Category 5 intensity on three separate occasions. A monster of a storm, the hurricane impacted the Lesser Antilles, Hispaniola, Jamaica, Cuba, Mexico and the United States in August 1980. This storm was Hurricane Adam. Allen began in the central Atlantic and became a hurricane as it approached Barbados. Passing very close to the island, Allen became a major hurricane and eventually a Category 5 storm over the Caribbean Sea. Allen passed very close to Haiti at Category 5 strength before weakening slightly as it passed Cuba and Jamaica without making landfall. Allen went on to attain Category 5 intensity twice more before striking southern Texas as a major storm. Many homes were destroyed in Barbados, St. Lucia and the Cayman Islands. Haiti was ravaged by winds and flooding, causing severe agricultural losses and nearly a million left homeless. Minor damage was reported in Texas, with Allen's rainfall welcome due to a recent drought in the region. At 46 was a long tracking intense Atlantic hurricane which struck the Leeward Islands, the Bahamas, Florida and the rest of the East Coast in 1960. At the time the storm was one of the most costly with almost a billion dollars of damage. This was Hurricane Donna. Donna formed to the south of the Cape Verde Islands and progressed west-northwest becoming a hurricane and then a major hurricane in the central Atlantic. Donna then threatened the Leeward Islands as a Category 5 storm, before weakening to a Category 4 storm as it passed very close to the northernmost islands. The storm then cruised through the Bahamas, passed close to Cuba, and then struck South Florida as a Category 4 storm. Donna continued as a hurricane to another landfall in North Carolina, and then Long Island and Connecticut still as a hurricane. Donna caused a large loss of property on St. Martin, heavy flooding in Puerto Rico, major damage on the Florida Keys and environmental damage in parts of southern and western Florida. Less severe but nonetheless widespread damage occurred in North Carolina and the Northeast. Storm 45 is a major hurricane that caused hundreds of deaths in northern Mexico in 1976. Moving northward for much of its life, Hurricane Liza is also responsible for flooding and $100 million in damage.
Liza formed to the southwest of Mexico and began to move north upon reaching tropical storm status. Liza then became a hurricane and eventually a major hurricane as it moved at a snail's pace for a time. Liza eventually approached the Baja California Peninsula, passing just to the east as a Category 4 storm, and then made landfall in Mexico as a major hurricane. Heavy rains from the storm caused flooding, leading to a dam failure which killed hundreds. At 44 is another hurricane that affected a similar area to the last storm. Over 12 days, this storm moved slowly westward before shooting north into the Baja California Peninsula in September 1982. This was Hurricane Paul. Paul began as a slow-moving depression which briefly moved over El Salvador and Guatemala and then began to travel west. After a number of days, Paul finally became a tropical storm and eventually a hurricane as it curved towards the north. The storm reached Category 2 status before skimming past the tip of Baja California and then making landfall in Mexico. Major flooding in El Salvador and Guatemala killed hundreds when Paul was a tropical depression. Damage to communications and flooding also occurred in Mexico where Paul struck as a hurricane. Total damages from the storm consisted of many thousands of homes damaged or destroyed and over a billion dollars in damage. Storm 43 was a hurricane that destroyed a lot of the Mexican city of Mazatlan in 1943. Not much is known about the specific track and intensity, and so here is a reconstruction which may be inaccurate. The Mazatlan hurricane made landfall near the city without warning, with the resulting winds, waves and heavy rainfall causing significant damage, destroying whole towns near the coast. A hundred fatalities are attributed to the storm. We're taken all the way back to 1893 for Storm 42, this one being a major and long-lived Atlantic hurricane. This storm struck the Bahamas and the United States, maintaining Category 3 intensity for over a day as it paralleled uncomfortably close to the Florida coast before making landfall in Georgia. This was the Sea Islands hurricane. This storm started by moving through the Cape Verde Islands and began a period of slow intensification, reaching Category 3 intensity far to the north of the Leeward Islands. The storm struck the Bahamas and then moved on to Florida where it paralleled the coast before making landfall in Georgia. This storm came with a large storm surge which was responsible for most of the damage and a thousand plus fatalities. At 41 is a North Indian cyclone that formed in October 1876 and produced an immense 40-foot storm surge, causing mass drowning and famine in the landfall area. This was the Great Bakagange cyclone. This storm formed in the Bay of Bengal and progressed northwards, intensifying along the way. Estimates put the storm at Category 4 intensity at landfall, with a massive storm surge leading to the deaths of around 100,000 people. Following the storm, epidemic and famine killed a further 100,000. We've come to the end of part 3 in the top 100. Coming up is my secondary feature, summary of all this year's Northern Hemisphere storms, this part covering August to September.
beginning with Hurricane Ernesto, which formed on the first day of August and slowly moved through the Caribbean, becoming a Category 1 hurricane just before striking the Mexican coast. Ernesto caused 12 fatalities and over $250 million of damage. Next up is Typhoon Haiku, which formed on August the 2nd and became a Category 1 typhoon before striking China on August the 8th. The storm caused a lot of damage in China, uh, with many evacuated and relocated because of the damages, with over $2 billion of damage in total and over 100 dead as a result of the storm. Tropical Storm Kirigi was a largely harmless storm, only a tropical storm, a weak one at that, 50 mile per hour top wind speed, didn't cause any damage in Japan but came pretty close before becoming extra tropical not too far from the island of Hokkaido. Tropical Storm Florence initially looked like a promising storm intensifying to 60 miles per hour before just petering out towards the end. It didn't cause any damage to any land areas or any other effects. Next up is Hurricane Gilmo, which began on August the 7th to the south of Mexico, moving westwards and then becoming a hurricane and then pushing north until August the 11th when it finally dissipated. It didn't come close to land and didn't affect any land areas. Now moving on to Helene, which formed on August the 9th as a depression, but then weakened into a remnant low and regenerated in the Bay of Campeche, on August the 17th, becoming a tropical storm for a brief period. Now to tropical storm Hector, which was uh, initially spawned by Ernesto, forming on August the 11th. Didn't affect any land areas when it became a tropical storm, a weak one at that, dissipating on August the 16th. Following that, we had Kaitak, the Philippine name Helen, becoming a tropical storm on August the 12th, striking the Philippines and then becoming a typhoon before striking China and finally dissipating over Vietnam on August the 17th. This storm killed 40 and caused over $260 million of damage. Now it's Hurricane Gordon which formed on August the 15th and eventually became a hurricane over the Central Atlantic before moving towards the Azores and finally becoming extratropical on the 20th. The Azores reported little in the way of damage, though there were some local flooding and minor damaged homes. Then we have Typhoon Tembim, which formed on August the 19th and became a Category 4 storm before curving to the west and striking Taiwan at Category 3 intensity. Though it wasn't the wind that was the problem there, it was mainly the rains, which were very serious, causing 10 fatalities and $8 million of damage in total. Then it was the turn of Typhoon Bolivan, which formed on August the 20th and quickly became a typhoon, a Category 4 typhoon at that, when it struck Okinawa Island and then moved to North Korea and eventually Russia, causing plenty of damage there, causing a total of $475 million of damage and possibly more than 100 dead as a result of the storm. Now for Hurricane Isaac, a storm that couldn't really make its mind up it seemed, forming as a tropical storm, passing through the Leeward Islands and then striking Haiti and Cuba as a tropical storm. Then it moved uh, towards the Gulf Coast as a hurricane and struck Louisiana, but for a relatively weak storm, Category 1 intensity, it did produce a large storm surge which caused most of the damage in the United States. 
Uh, there were 38 deaths in total, with over $2 billion in damages in the end. Then we had Tropical Storm Joyce, a very weak storm which didn't really last long, probably one of the most forgettable ones in the Atlantic, forming on August 22nd and only lasting two days before dissipating. Then it was Hurricane Iliana in the Eastern Pacific on for August the 27th, forming there, becoming a hurricane not too far from the Baja California coast, but it didn't cause any damage or effects in total too far away from land. Dissipated on September the 2nd. Then we had Hurricane Kirk in the Atlantic. This storm formed on August the 28th and became a Category 2 storm. Didn't cause any damage in total. Uh, on September the 2nd, it dissipated. 105 miles per hour, though. Yes, this is unscripted. Now for Hurricane Leslie, which formed in the Atlantic again, forming on August the 30th, becoming a hurricane for a short period as it stalled in the Atlantic passing to the east of Bermuda, not causing much damage, but the effects were felt on some of the islands. Unlike John's of the past, Tropical Storm John of 2012 was a very weak one. 40 mile per hour winds, barely a tropical storm, didn't trouble Mexico and didn't cause any damages there. Now for Hurricane Michael, the strongest storm of the Atlantic season, believe it or not, reaching a wind speed of 115 miles per hour, an air pressure of 964 millibars and a fairly erratic track as well, curving left and right and left again as a Category 3 storm, finally weakening and becoming extratropical eventually. Michael didn't affect any land areas. Now for Typhoon Sanba, which was a monster of a storm really, a Category 5, the first one of the Pacific season and the first one since 2011. This storm caused $379 million in damage and six fatalities in total. Significant flooding was the main event from this storm despite its wind speeds. Now for Hurricane Nadine, the longest lasting storm of the 2012 season and one of the strangest I've seen, becoming a hurricane on three separate occasions, a 90 mile per hour storm and giving the Azores a scare more than once as well. However, in total, Nadine didn't cause much damage. In the grand scheme of things, the Azores got off fairly lightly. Now to Tropical Storm Christy, a storm that threatened but didn't do anything in the end as it reached its peak intensity of 60 miles per hour forming on September the 12th and lasting for five days, uh, staying fairly close to the Mexican coast but not causing too much damage in that area, if any at all. Now for Hurricane Lane, a largely forgettable storm really forming on September the 15th, progressing northwest, becoming a hurricane and then weakening again, not causing any damage in the, in the, in total.
Now to the second Category 5 storm the world saw this year, forming on September 20th, again in the Western Pacific, reaching Category 5 intensity on its way to the Japanese islands. Much of Japan was disrupted by this storm, but only two fatalities resulted, and $27 million of damage was reported. Very strong storm. Then came Hurricane Miriam, forming on September the 22nd and eventually reaching Category 3 status. This storm threatened Mexico for a time, but proved to just weaken and then dissipate, with no damage reported in the end. Moving to Tropical Storm Erinia in the Western Pacific, not causing much damage. It's forming on September the 24th, not troubling anywhere really. 65 miles per hour though. A storm to be reckoned with if it moved over any significant landmass, but it didn't quite get there. Now to Tropical Storm Norman, a very short-lived storm. It did cause one fatality though, as it moved through Mexico on September the 28th. I'm not sure if it actually did make landfall in the end, but it was very close. Now to Tropical Storm Malixi in the Pacific, another one that went for the large part harmlessly out to sea, save for some of the Japanese islands. A 50 mile per hour storm forming on September the 30th and dissipating on October the 3rd. At the end of Hurricane Week I'll be answering any questions that you the viewer may have submitted during the week. If you have a question just comment below this video. For those of you watching these I upload them, part 4 will be up tomorrow. Otherwise part 4 should be around here somewhere if you look carefully enough.